dedicated to Bert Hill in honour of his all the good work he's done here, and, and I hope he has a good retirement. I have to put my glasses on; I can't see. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to speed up because it's very late. Do we? Oh, we've just got to bring the slides in because they go off the edge. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about. First of all, introduce the red limit for oxygenic photosynthesis, the role of chlorophyll A in this idea. Um, talk about the discovery of far red absorbing chlorophylls, D and F, and um, talk about the role of chlorophyll D and chlorophyll D cyanobacteria, and then talk about chlorophyll F um, cyanobacteria. So to speed up. So um, <clears throat> until recently, it was thought that only the excited state energy gap of chlorophyll A could um, uh, produce a high enough redox potential to um, oxidize water. Sorry, I've got a by press. Oh, Dan, I turned everything off. Oh, turned everything off. Have I? Oh, no, it's come back again. Where's the... Oh, there it is. There we are. Um, I don't know why it's gone so dark. So in order to get a P680, you needed chlorophyll A to get the high redox potential to oxidize water and also to get a low enough redox potential to reduce um, ferrodoxin. Um, got to get myself in. So, um, however, the discovery of far red absorbing chlorophylls, further to the red of chlorophyll A, I've rather screwed up that idea. Um, uh, chlorophyll D was discovered in the 90s um, and it's only present in Acaria chlorus marina. There are a number of strains of Acaria chlorus marina and they all live in a low visible light situation. Um, so they obviously need to absorb a, a light out in the infrared in order to grow. Um, they, a cario always has practically all chlorophyll D in it um, and it, just, it does have a few molecules of chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll F, which was discovered only in 2010, is rather different. It's present in a number of cyanobacteria which range right across the phylum of cyanobacteria, which I'll come back to. And you only ever get up to about 10% of the total chlorophyll is chlorophyll F. The rest is chlorophyll A. Um, go on to the next one. Oh, I think I went, I was meant to say. Yeah. So what's the difference? You see here that, um, oh, sorry, the pale green here is, when, is 666 is absorption of chlorophyll A, and you get a 32 nanometer shift in methanol for chlorophyll D, and a 42 nanometer shift for chlorophyll F. The structure is um, chlorophyll A has on ring one, position three, a vinyl group. And in chlorophyll D, the vinyl is a four mile group. In chlorophyll F, it's position two, you get a four mile group. So in chlorophyll F, you have a four mile and you have the vinyl on position two, three, sorry. Um, these, as I said, just to repeat, I'll go quickly, carrier chlorus, Marina is the only one which is totally chlorophyll D. The chlorophyll F cyanobacteria um, were discovered in 2010 in a number of organisms. And it was only in 2014 that people started reporting that in fact there was also a, a low level of chlorophyll D in the strains or the cyanobacteria that, where they found chlorophyll F. Um, and so there's a question of whether these people missed chlorophyll D or whether they don't have chlorophyll D. Um, and then GAN has shown you've got this whole range of different cyanobacteria which can produce chlorophyll F. But you only see it when you take the cells and you grow them in far red light. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. Oh, God, sorry. Um, so I'm going to talk about the role of them in... Oh, that's right. I'm going to go back again, yeah. So basically, I'm just going to give you a background in what we think of where, about a carrier chlorus. Um, so I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> um, so here we just emphasize the fact that basically, if you have this isolated PS1, and you see they absorb 715 as opposed to 680 for chlorophyll A organism, in this case spinach um, particles. Uh, and uh, 
So, the, as I said, the idea of having a red limit um, was tested by the uh, discovery of Acaria chlorus marina. Um, it, it grows in a position underneath a chlor chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B canopy, because it, it grows underneath an ascidian um, where there's a, large, there's a very thick layer of prochloron above it, so chlorophyll A, B has absorbed all the visible light. Um, it consistently has a few molecules of chlorophyll A present, and it obviously has an antenna role because um, there's 95% of the chlorophyll is D, so obviously that's the antenna. Um, in PS1, the primary radical pair is P740+, plus. so therefore instead of having a special pair of chlorophyll A, A prime, as you do in chlorophyll A organisms, uh, you have a special pair of chlorophyll D, D prime, and the Japanese group has shown that um, chlorophyll D prime is present. An excited energy state gap for chlorophyll D is 100 millivolts less than chlorophyll A. And so the questions were, were does chlorophyll D drive photochemistry in PS2, i.e. does it oxidize water, and what's the role of chlorophyll A? Well, just here's the conclusion. Um, so the cofactors of PS1, um, what we conclude is that all the chlorophylls are chlorophyll D, except for the primary acceptor, A0. Um, and, um, and in the A chain, and probably in the B chain as well. It's not sure. That's not actually been shown. And so you get charge separation from this accessory chlorophyll, uh, which is a chlorophyll D, to A0. And then the charge relaxes onto the special pair, P740, chlorophyll D, chlorophyll D prime. PS2, it's not such a clear consensus. Um, this is what I believe, and I did lots of experiments with Eberhard Schlodder, a nice um, <coughs> P plus um, different spectra, and, and uh, Renger and Schlodder did um, molecular dynamic calculations and came up with this um, model here. Basically, all the chlorophylls in gain a chlorophyll D, as in PS2, um, uh, PS1, um, and, but we think that the primary donor, this accessory chlorophyll here, chlorophyll D1, is chlorophyll D, and the acceptors are pheophytin A. This is unusual in a way. These organisms, they don't make pheophytin D. Pheophytin D has not been found in, in, in vivo at all. Um, but after charge separation, you then get the, the cation goes on to the PD1, and this is a chlorophyll A, and we see a very clear chlorophyll A cation <coughs> um, signal. Um, Tomo's group and Ito, uh, in their last papers some time ago on this, don't agree. They actually have it the other way around. They have this is a chlorophyll A and that is a chlorophyll D. But I've got, we've got a lot of arguments. If you read Renger and Schlodder, they explain why we think they're wrong. So let's move on to, um, so the conclusions are that in the chlorophyll D cyanobacteria, chlorophyll D is the primary donor in both PS1 and PS2. The primary acceptor is chlorophyll A in PS1, whereas the radical cation resides on chlorophyll A in PS2. So chlorophyll D has a role as antenna in, and in photochemistry. Um, so now we're going to move on to um, cyanobacteria, uh, so chlorophyll F. Um, I'm going to say, as I say, the, the, the cyanobacteria were isolated from microbial mats, etc. They were basically living in a stable far red enriched environment, so maybe it wasn't surprising they've got a far red chlorophyll in them. Um, subsequently, it was shown that this wide group were grown in far red light, they produced chlorophyll F. And what Bryant's group, Gans from Bryant's group, these cyanobacteria have a G cluster which produces different photosystems, system one and system two, and bilisome proteins. So when you illuminate the cells with far red light, we get activation, far red light photo activation, far lip as Brian calls it, of the production of chlorophyll F and, and, and new kinds of photosystem one and photosystem two complexes. So chlorophyll F organisms are different from A. marina um, because chlorophyll F is only present when the cyanobacteria are grown in far red light. And as I said, this is, a, this is actually a reversible process. 
if you take the far red light cells and put them back into white light cells, the chlorophyll F goes away. Um, you only get up to 10% of chlorophyll F, rest is chlorophyll A. Many, but not all of them, have a small amount of chlorophyll D. And the organism we work with is this Croococcidiopsis thermalis, which we grow under 750 LED light. And we, we only get this 10% of chlorophyll F, even though you could go through many cycles of dilution and further growth in far red light. It doesn't change. It stays at that with this 1% D, 10% F. Um, so here's a spectrum comparing the white light cells with, and then the red spectrum, um, far red light cells. And so you see, you see the chlorophyll A in both sets of cells, but in the far red light you see this 709 peak that comes in. But also right out to 800 you get other components in the spectrum. Um, so HPLC, basically just to be very quick here, HPLC and this is of PS1 and PS2 complexes, which we've isolated by sucrose density gradient centrifugation. The PS2 has got chlorophyll F, chlorophyll A, <coughs> and here's the chlorophyll D, and also we can see the pheophytin. Um, and we're using an ex um, we're detecting at a wavelength that exaggerates the F relative to the A, but. If we go to other wavelengths, you can prove that this really is fear-fighting. We've got the spectrum here, and this is chlorophyll D. But in the PS1, you only see chlorophyll F and chlorophyll A. There's no sign of um, chlorophyll D or fear-fighting A, not surprisingly. And the stoichiometry, it, PS2, we've got 30, for 30 chlorophyll A's, we have four chlorophyll F, uh, one chlorophyll D, and two fear-fighting A, which you expect for PS2. Whereas PS1, it's 90 chlorophyll A, 7 to 8 chlorophyll F molecules, and no D or fear So um, properties of chlorophyll F cells. Um, the fluorescence spectra, uh, interesting, this is at 80K. So if you look at the, the black spectrum, which is the white light cells, you have typical um, spectrum, low temperature. We have 684 and 694 shoulder for, for PS2 in a chlorophyll A organism. The 724 is the PS1 uh, peak for chlorophyll A. But when you look at the far red light cells, all the fluorescence is coming out at 753, i.e. from chlorophyll F, which indicates that the chlorophyll F is sufficiently coupled to chlorophyll A and that it's present in all the photosystems. If you had a sort of mixture, some of the photosystems had F and some didn't, you would expect chlorophyll A fluorescence as well. Action spectra for PS1, um, so this is the PS1 action spectra for far red light cells versus white light cells. And as you go out into the far red, you get this, um, you can, we can get P PS1 activity right out to nearly 800. I can't actually read the wavelengths there. PS2, similarly, in the white light cells, stops at 700, but the far red light cells, you have a, another shoulder here. And Here's the um, sucrose density gradient. We get a really nice fractionation of PS2 and PS1. And this is the spectrum at room temperature. So the red one here has got this long wavelength bump, which is exa exactly mirrors the action spectrum here. And the, black, the blue one here is the PS2. And they mirror it, as you would, might expect. Um, so now I'm going to talk about what's happening in PS1, and so PS1 complexes. And we see that in white light cells, P700 is efficiently oxidized uh, by red light, but not by far red light, 750, whereas in the, in the far red light, they're, they're equally efficiently um, oxidized, P700. Um, Flash-induced um, P700 plus... Um, different spectra shown here. So we get bleaching at, at 700 in both the far red light and, and the white light. That's black versus red lines there. Um, and what we see here is around about 675, where you, where you get band shifts in the white light, they disappear in the far red light cells. And we, it's, we, this is room temperature here. We get changes out here in the far red. And when we look at low temperature, low temperature, 
you see that there's um, a quite a sharp change, but down at 1.8K um, at 745 nanometers. So we attribute that to chlorophyll F. That's too far out for chlorophyll D. Um, and we conclude that in um, <clears throat> the cofactors for PS1 in chlorophyll F in C. thermalis, um, the, the primary donors are chlorophyll F, probably in the A branch and the B branch, and the primary acceptor, 684, that band shift was still present in both sets of cells, um, is a chlorophyll A acceptor, as we saw in the carrier chlorus marina, and you've got P700 would be chlorophyll A. A prime. So PS2, what do we know about PS2? Um, so we have a similar experiment to the one from P700 plus. We have an inefficient oxygen evolution in the white light cells with far red light, whereas we have efficient um, oxygen evolution in the far red cells. Um, an interesting point is when we measured thermoluminescence, it's absolutely huge in, these, in this C thermalis. It's 25 times the signal. It's 25 times larger than the white life light signal. Here, the two signals are blown up so that they're sort of normalized by a factor of 25. And this means that the, this big change means that the excited state energy gap between the precursor charge pair and the luminescent excited state chlorophyll is lower in the far red light cells. Otherwise, the thermoluminescence is normal, which indicates that there's no change in the critical electron transport rates in far red light to PS1. Um, more activities, um, far red light thylakoids, QA reduction is the same in visible and far red light. Um, carotenoid oxidation, this is low temperature. Um, these changes an indication of acti PS2 activity. This is the carotenoid on the um, D2 side in the reaction center. These changes are, are occurring at very low temperatures, 77 here, 15K, where uphill energy transfer should be less efficient or non-existent um, over these wide um, wavelength differences between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll F and indicate that far red chlorophyll is involved in the primary charge separation in PS2. So can we see if it's what chlorophyll it is. And this is the phytin minus different spectrum. And the point I just want you to take, we've got phytin minus changes here, is that we get this big band shift out here, but it's at 725 nanometers, um, not as far out as we saw in PS1. And similarly, we get another 725, 727 uh, band shift, and this is at low temperature when we look at QA minus reduction. Um, so is, this is a funny wavelength. Is it chlorophyll D, because we know there's a D molecule in there, or is it F? Um, again, here in blue, we've got a, the low temperature spectrum, and you can see that you get a nice distinction of between different far red chlorophyll uh, absorbances, and we attribute this one at 750 to one chlorophyll F, this to two chlorophyll F, and this one to two Fs and one D which is exactly where you've got this band shift. This is actually something to do with phycobilisomes proved by um, magnetic CD. So the conclusion is for PS2 that again, um, all, the, the, all the chlorophylls are chlorophyll A apart from the primary donor here, chlorophyll D1, where we get the primary charge separation from here to fear phytid minus. And, and that we, don't know. This could be a chlorophyll D or it could be a chlorophyll F molecule. But um, PD1 we expect to be chlorophyll A. Um, well that's just a... I'm trying to go fast. Um, so we've purified, conclusion, we've purified clean PS1 and PS2 from a far red light grown uh, chlorophyll F cyanobacterium. And we've shown that the chlorophyll F has an antenna function but also despite the low amount is present in all the photosystems. Chlorophyll F is involved in PS1 charge separation as the primary electron donor. In PS2, it could be chlorophyll D or chlorophyll F acting as the primary electron donor. Um, the extra chlorophyll F that's present in these samples, I showed you for PS2, but it applies to PS1 as well, 
is tuned to a, a, a aid efficient energy transfer to the traps. And in fact, this organism is an intriguing model system because the individual reaction set to chlorophyll Fs can be distinguished um, spectrally and separated, as you, you could do with bacterial reaction centers where the donors and acceptors and things have got nice separate absorption. And we've always had a problem with chlorophyll red congestion and you can't, uh, sorry, chlorophyll A absorbance in the red um, congestion. So we're left with question. And the question I'll leave you with is, is there a new red limit for oxygen, oxygenic photosynthesis? Um, despite having chlorophyll F absorbing beyond 750 available for PS2 activity, the wavelength used is 725 nanometers, which is the same as the primary donor in uh, Acaria chlorus marina, which only has chlorophyll D. Um, that is, these organisms functioning beyond the red limit use the same wavelength and probably, possibly, use the same pigment. Chlorophyll D. So you, we could say possibly there's a, you could say there's a second red limit for PS2, and the energy sacrificed by not going further out into the red may represent the energy headroom required to mitigate photo damage, which is caused by <coughs> variable light in PS2 by variable light transiently favoring harmful back reactions, radical pair triplet formation and singlet oxygen formation. Um, PS2 in particular has, got, really got to, has big problems with this kind of photo damage. And the question remains is in chlorophyll F organisms, is there always some chlorophyll D present there uh, with a role in PS2 photochemistry or do some only have chlorophyll F and maybe chlorophyll F uh, is, the, is the donor. And with that, I'd like to thank, I did very little of this work. I just did some sucrose density gradients and measured some pigments for people, but to encourage people along. Mainly done the works done by Dennis Nuremberg in Imperial College and with Bill Rutherford, and a lot of help from other people there. And most of the spectroscopy was done around the world. Fluorescence in Queen Mary, um, EBPC with Fabrice and Pierre Joliot, Elmer's Krauss in uh, ANU in Australia, Alain did the EPR, and Stefano Santa Barbara did some early um, different spectra. <laughs> and I, with that, I'd like to thank you all. Thanks, Alison. Okay, we've got time for a few questions. Okay, well, I, will, I will ask one. Yeah. I, I, you said that the chlorophyll F insertion was reversible. Do, yeah. Is that because the, the, the same cell removes the, the chlorophyll F, or is it just you're growing more bacteria? Well, well no, the, the gene cluster that makes the chlorophyll F is turned off, and the old, the normal D1, D2, and phycobilisome and, 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 and right. PS1 so, so genes the, are turned back on again. So I same, believe that's what's so happened, So the same yes. bacterial cell, not the, the new ones growing. Um, no, I, I, thought, don't know I thought you said you had to reculture them several times. Well, I mean, it, it takes a couple of weeks, I think, to change, sort of 10 days or something to change. I mean, if you take white light cells with chlorophyll A and you put them in there so that they, they sludgy for a bit and then after a bit they get going. You can't see them because they're apparently growing in total darkness because <laughs> you've got a 750 oh, right. LED. That's a bit yeah. strange, growing things in darkness. Okay, thanks. But it, yes, um, so I, I think it's, it's a question of, of, of switching off one set of genes and switching on another set. Um, okay. And it, it, you know, the, the, these cells are growing in sort of weird sort of places like um, microbial mats where basically there are uh, chlorophyll A, B organisms above uh, absorbing everything, but in stable environments. So in vivo, uh, the, the uh, Chen found, she found chlorophyll F first. She just extracted chlorophyll F from some microbial mats. And then she found um, a filamentous uh, cyanobacterium, which right. was... So what, what's their doubling time in your oh. growth conditions? Um, it's pretty slow, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Dennis would be able to tell you that. <laughs> okay.
Okay, thanks. I okay. just harvest them. Okay, any more else? questions? I guess everyone You've probably is had enough. a bit tired. <laughs> anybody wants to ask me any questions? Mi 40 minutes behind schedule. Yeah. So yeah. thanks again, Alison, and to all of the speakers in yeah. these uh, two okay. sessions this afternoon. Right. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.